Hi guys. Hello, I'm Ayala, your favorite Christian content creator based in Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome to another episode. If you're new here, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. You're welcome to my faith journey with Ayolash. Please follow my channel. I love you. God bless you. So, if you're new here, you're welcome. I film everything based on Christianity, my faith journey, my faith work with God, what I've learned along the line, and what I'm still learning. I'm here to share and minister to the whole world. I'm sorry, you guys. Today, my energy is very low. I know. I'm a little bit, not a little bit, I'm very much under the weather. Like, my dose is blocked and everything. And, yeah, my head is not giving what it's supposed to give. Also, my truth hurts so much. So, but see God's work, we retweet regardless of what is happening to us physically and I am whole, I'm well but in the name of Jesus yes, that's how we work, we work by faith and not by sight so um, so don't mind my voice please I'm sorry in very short. So, um, today we will be talking about um, understanding God's love through Romans 8. Well, I say, I would say that Romans 8 is somewhat like a very strong chapter for me. I so much love it. I love it so, so much. Has a lot of things there and that I could relate to as a believer and that really excuse me is amazing. So let's start from Romans 8 1, which says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. I mean, imagine just starting your journey and you come across the scripture like Romans 8, 1, like saying that therefore there is no condemnation as far as you are in Christ. Like, there is literally nothing again. Like, the only person that condemns and is the accuser of brethren is the devil. And that's just like all. Like, that is um, like the beauty of our work with God. I'm reading from my Bible. So yeah, hence why I might be looking down. So and I'm just like, wow, God, you're amazing. And this this particular verse is really, really interesting because I remember the time when I knew this started. I know how I struggled with dealing with the fact that I was a sinner. And the fact that I felt so disgusted with myself and irritated at the fact that see all the things I have done and me coming to Christ and the devil definitely want to put you in that position. So that's why even going forward to now, whenever I do something or the Holy Spirit brings something to my heart, I am always like quick to like change and fix myself up. And then I don't dwell in that place because I know that there is no condemnation as far as I'm aware. And I try and make effort, all possible effort, not to do the same thing again. Like, yeah, the Holy Spirit correct it. Jesus, that's part of the process. That's part of the journey. I work with God, basically. Then if we go through 3 to 11, we can see that it's talking about the fact that... Um, God sent Jesus Christ to come in form of us, like in flesh, to come down as man, to see that sin can be defeated. 
and that the fact that you keep on saying that oh sin sin keeps on being an excuse for you to keep doing wrong says that jesus christ came himself to actually like he came he sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh an account of sin and he condemned sin in the flesh basically jesus christ was the man without sin like he came to this earth and he didn't sin so it just shows us that we can actually put sin under our feet we can actually put sin under our feet since jesus christ because he says that in ah this page remind me but the same authority that jesus christ has given us and jesus christ had on earth the same authority that he left with us also and says how uh, for those in five he says for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirits the things of the spirits actually in all honesty and that's the truth like i realized that once i stayed because there are a lot of things i had to drop a lot of sins of the flesh that the holy spirit will work in my heart and i noticed that once I started becoming aware of the spirit and the fact that I'm not ruled by my flesh, but by the spirit of God in me, I started reasoning differently and I've been able to overcome sins, things of the flesh that I was. So it's by me setting my heart right and setting it on the things of the spirit. That's how I was able to get to that place. I'm not perfect, but it's perfect. Even our patriarchs of the, like they are still dealing with things but however once you are able to even though you know that his grace is sufficient for you you know that definitely when you're wrong when you do things you should be able to call yourself and also work because it is a work our, our journey with god is a work it's like it's not like a destination it's not like oh this is the best to get out no till you die you continue to learn on this journey then let's go forward to 14 where it says that for as many are as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god i mean that just goes to show the fact that god knows his children he knows his his own his own like in as much as everyone wants to be like oh my gosh god god loves me i pass the love this that, that, that but truly the question is are you led by the spirit of god to be able to be a partaker of his sonship because that is the qualification to be a child of God, in all honesty. And that's the truth. Let's put it plainly as it is that only when you are led by the Spirit of God, because that's the only way God can contact, not the only way, but it is also a function of the fact that the Spirit of God is in you. You can understand visions, you can prophesy the fruit of the Spirit is in you, the gift of the Spirit is in you. So, like, those are the things. But when you are not, I'm sorry. Or when you're not fully like your the Holy Spirit is in you, but it takes you activating it because if you don't call God into a situation, you will never put his mouth. So if you don't activate the Holy Spirit, then it's just going to leave you till you're ready to activate activate the Holy Spirit. Then I want to now tell us that the fact that evil says how he has adopted us. In 15 it says how or you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Like, it's the fact that he's saying how automatically he has adopted us. Like, there's nothing you can say again. Everything is just resonating with the love of God. The fact that he has given us the spirit of adoption, not the bondage of fear. Like, we should not fear is a spirit like, as you've come into god you understand that there are things you'll be afraid of let them go of things there are things that even as christians we are scared of but then he has given us the spirit of adoption thus we are now like christ and thus christ did not live by fear he has not given us the spirit of fear but of sound mind power and love then then in 16 he says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god so automatically like i said 
the spirit of god is what makes god know that like that's the spirit of god is like the witness the fact that the evidence of the spirit of god in you is the witness to the fact that you are a child of god I don't know if you get what i'm saying but yeah like basically for you to truly and fully be a child of god you must have the spirit of god work in you because one thing for sure is the fact that the Holy Spirit is what will direct you. God will lead you through different ways. But you need the Holy Spirit to even understand. Because if the Holy Spirit is not present, He's the one that teaches us. He will help you understand scriptures. He will help you understand the word of God. So like, yeah. And it says in 17, that if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, then we are we may also be glorified together. So at the end of the day, all our sufferings on this earth as children of God, everything. When Jesus is receiving glory, when God is being glorified, we're also being glorified with Him, together with Him, and being glorified with Christ. Because yes, we're doing the work now for Christ. We're suffering. We're doing everything, but I don't count it as suffering. I count it instead as service. Suffering. It's not like it's not suffering or it's service to him. So like at the end of the day, we would all be glorified together with Christ. Then let's go further to twenty-six, which talks about the fact that likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, but we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the earth knows what the mind of the spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among the virgins. Like there are times that like i said how even there are times that we cannot even there are certain groaning certain pains that we have in our hearts that we cannot even express but through the grace of the holy spirit being present in our lives the holy spirit prays for us is prays through our groanings basically ministers to the holy spirit for and um, ministers to god for us speaks to god for us even we pray prayers even when we don't even know what we are praying for, but the Holy Spirit prays true for us. And at the end of the day, it says that for all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Like even good, bad, ugly, nice, fine. Everything works for the good of all of us. Everything works together for all our good. So like yeah. Then the fact that he always also said the fact that we are conformed to the image of his son who are conformed basically is telling us that yes we are conformed we are made to the image where jesus christ is basically our template and we are to conform already we are conformed to christ it's just for us to now go along the process of fully becoming christ really becoming like christ and he is our firstborn that was like see this verse talking about the sonship like we have in god and jesus christ is the first one of the rest of us brethren so but abba i love you so much and it goes also for the internet when he says that um what then shall we say to this thing if god is for us who can be against us and in all honesty this scripture even with 28 27 everything has worked in my life everything i can say that yes has worked out in my life because as god has always been on my side many people will be like i you many things you have many things that you have going on for you you don't deserve them but i'm like yes i know i don't deserve them but who can be against me because i have god on my side many people have tried a lot of things many people have don't hurt me everything but god always push me god always seems good and then he picks me out and it just shows that who can be against me because i have god uh, and then he even says how for he did not even spare his own son like 
but delivered him up for all of for us all how shall we not with him also freely give or how shall he not with him also freely give us all things so now whenever now this theme is a very profound scripture to me because it's like it's like god literally gave up his son for us and do you think there is nothing he would not give up for you? I mean, he leaves the ninety-nine for the one. Like he gave up his son. Who can even me as a person pray to have the grace to be able to let go of the child, the child that I would have, I would conceive to let go of that child. Yeah. Like, what more do you need again to understand how much God loves you and the fact that He's going to supply your needs in, to the riches of His glory? It's like, my love, if He can give up Jesus, there's nothing He cannot give up, there's nothing He can give to you freely. Like, yeah, romantic, I love it so much. Um, then we go down further along 33 34. I know that that talks about the fact that we are justified through Christ. I mean, even 32 talks about it. No, 33 rather, I'm sorry. 33, 34 talks about the fact that we are, God has justified us. Like, nobody can judge you. Nobody can. But because you are his son, in God, because you are under his sonship, basically, he has justified you automatically. And then 35 starts with who shall separate us from the love of God. And he lists a lot of things, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Um, there are a lot of things, even death, life, angels, principality, powers, even things are present, things to come, whatever. And he says in 39 that no eyes, no depths, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Like, literally, there's nothing you can do that can make God hate you. There's nothing you can do that can make God's love for you reduce. There's nothing you can do that can make God turn against you. Christ has come to die for us. His blood has sacrificed everything. So there's literally nothing you would do that will make, like, that will say, may God say, well, I'm, I, I dislike you. No. God loves you despite and regardless of your excesses. He loves you far beyond your understanding. He loves you far beyond your expectations. Like, I cannot count the amount of times that God's love has been expressed in my life, even those around me. There's no way you come around and not like, ah, this girl, you're loved by God. And it's not because I'm worthy or because there's any special thing I'm doing. But because of I'm a son of God. Fully understanding the fact that I'm a son of God. So yes, I'm deserving of God's love. Yes, I'm deserving of every good thing he has promised on earth. God is so beautiful. Like you guys, God is really beautiful. His love is all encompassing. His love never fails. His love is kind, patient. Oh my God. His love is everything and more. And that just gave me a template to how, because one thing I've got, gotten now in heading towards a new relationship or whatever, God's love is the template for me. And one thing I've learned is if you're a good Christian and the other person too is a good Christian that you would marry, marriage will be amazing because naturally the things that God told us to walk in, in love, in kindness, in patience, long suffering, everything, are the things that marriage requires. So definitely, I'm like, I'm working on all these things to be able to be that person and I trust that God is going to lead and direct me, my own person towards me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for strength to be able to do this. Yeah, so yeah, we've come to the end of today's episode and I love you all so much. I love you all. and I'm so sorry for my cold, my everything, me feeling all that weather, but I have to shoot this thing because I have to do God's work. Yes, and I'm not sorry about it. No matter the kata, the cough, the 
whatever I will do God's work even in rain and sunshine we do God's work so anyways guys now I've come to the end so please you all follow follow share share this episode to everyone share this episode to people that you feel like they need to understand God's love to share it like don't just keep it to yourself let let them be a new movement of christ making jesus famous guys please you guys should not forget to like subscribe comment and share and turn on your post notification so you get notified every single time let us continue to remain in the business to make jesus famous and also influence people in the culture of Christ. I love you all so much. God bless you. And please don't forget to patronize me for my book, Having a Conversational Relationship with God. These things, some of the things I mentioned here are inside our book. So you should definitely co- get a copy. You can DM me at Ayolash on Instagram to get a copy. And I love you all so much. God bless you. Have an amazing weekend and a week ahead. And yes. Happy new month. <laughs> I totally forgot. Happy new month, you guys. I wish us victory in this last month. See, this last month will be a month of breakthrough. In fact, that it is even the ending. Because it says that the ending of a thing is better than the beginning there. Father Lord, the ending of this year will be astonishing for everyone in the world. But at the ending of this year will be better than beginning in animal the future of everyone will be better than their past and present learning world but and i'm praying that by the end of it oh lord your glory and adoration don't you me father and just god bless you mm-hmm.